All right, well, I'll get us started. So welcome to the show here. Anybody that is that's currently watching us or that may be joining us, um, we are um, moving in a little bit of a new chapter here starting in 2023, and this will be Tour Carterville's public policy. Um, and this is, it, it will be airing on um, Tour Carterville's Facebook and uh, Tour Carterville YouTube page. Um, we'll be kind of promoting it on some other social channels as well. And so um, we're hoping to kind of uh, to, to, to push this thing and get some more people that can be informed. Right. So um, it's a show that's all about Carterville. Um, we look at what's happening in the back end of administration, what's happening with the board mayor and aldermen, um, things that are happening with taxes and all of that process. And then we look at also what the growth is happening. Carville is a growing town. So what's happening with growth, how it's building out, how it's becoming um, really a powerhouse I'm going to say this word city, um, but we like to refer to it as a town. But uh, but really, it is coming a powerhouse city, really, um, in, in, in a lot of ways. And is, is thought through um, like you would see some of the best laid out cities in the, in the country. So experience a lot of growth, um, a lot of small town community, which is why we like to call it, you know, a town. Um, so we're going to be um, really looking at all the things that are happening in in Carville. And we do that with Carville's vice mayor, uh, Maureen Frazier, um, who is with us down in the uh, bottom quadrant. I'll move us around in a minute. But That's okay. How are, yeah. How are you doing, Maureen? <laughs> I'm good. Thanks. Good morning. Good. Yeah. And uh, John Duncan helps us on the growth side, the uh, town economic development director. And so you doing okay, John? I'm doing great. Good to see you as always. Yeah. Yeah, good. Well, I'm a, I'm I'm excited for a little bit of a new chapter here, and we're going to put some renewed focus on it because one of the things we really – focus on here on this show is giving some of the real information by the people, John and Maureen, who know the real information and can go and find the real information because what's happening in Carville and I think is happening on a lot of um, towns is there's a lot of misinformation out there on social media. People are asking questions. Um, other people are responding that may or may not be informed and people get all upset about stuff might not even be true. Right. Uh, so people are, you know, people get, we can't do this. We can't do that. Yeah. Well, we're not planning on doing that. Uh, so, you know, so get, getting the the facts that's behind um, the scenes a little bit is what we want to do. Um, and so we're going to be really trying to push that out. And if you're watching the show, um, feel free to ask questions, uh, put them in the comments, the chats, and we'll try to get to those. If you're watching this and after it's, it's not live, it's been recorded. We'll try to get to them next week uh, because really this is um, uh, what we're trying to do. All of us here are trying to do is provide information, uh, the right information, the factual information about what's going on in Carville, answer a lot of questions. And we try to have some fun along the way, right, guys? Um, and so we, we try to make it fun and not just a uh, j just the facts, right? Just the, we, we put some fun in there. So, um, but I will, uh, I'll start us off with Maureen this week, maybe give us an update um, of what's happening um, with the BMA. And there was some news, John and I, and you weren't able to be here last time, but John and I just danced around a little bit because we didn't know all the details. Um, but there is um, um, a potential tax increase that I'd like you to touch on um, that's happening in Carville. Explain what that is, um, uh, you know, how, how, that, how that's going to be impactful and why it's necessary. And then just anything else that's going on in the BMA. But we can start with the uh, we can start with the taxes piece of it. Sure. Sure. Um, yes, we have a proposed tax increase that we will be voting on this coming up Monday night um, at our next Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting. Um, it is the public hearing. So our town administrator, Molly Maynard, will be doing the lengthy presentation. Um, our meetings, you're well, everyone's welcome to come at Town Hall at six o'clock or you can watch the live stream. Um, it's a very informative presentation that Molly will present to everyone. As you well know, if you've been watching us since January, we've been meeting pretty much every Thursday um, for two to three to four hours, um, working with every department head on the budget, on what the needs are, what keeps the department heads awake at night, um, things that we have need have to address. Um, some of them we don't have really a choice. Um, but this year, the proposed taxes are going to be increased 12 cents. Um, and just to give you a perspective, every penny of the tax rate brings in about two hundred nineteen thousand dollars. OK, um, I mean, so, how, you, how, so how does that work? So how did so twelve cents, twelve cents per what and how? I mean, it, it's not like everybody just has to pay an extra twelve cents. Right. There's a, no. a calculation. Right. John's got John's got his calculator out. I can tell. But 
Currently, we are at a dollar seventy-two, and so our proposal is a dollar eighty-four. And what that means is a dollar eighty-four cents per one thousand dollars in valuation, and your tax is assessed at twenty-five percent. So our public information department will be giving getting a lot of information out to people on how that calculates what the impact that will be at a certain price level, or not just only the price level of home, but what the assessed value of your home is. Because typically in Carnival, your assessed value is less than what the actual market value is, if that sure. makes sense. Yeah, that yeah. And that, and so if I'm doing that right, so I've got I didn't get the twenty five percent part, but if my house is worth two hundred thousand dollars, then two hundred times a dollar eighty what'd you say? Dollar eighty two? Dollar eighty. It'll be a dollar if it passes. Now we haven't voted yet, a dollar eighty four. Okay, so it'd be so I'd say so if I were worth two hundred, my home was assessed at two hundred thousand dollars. I would take two hundred times a dollar eighty four, and that no, would be my carvel. You would take twenty five percent of the two hundred thousand. Okay, so I'd say two hundred. John's got a calculator. Let's do two hundred thousand dollars. So if I have a two hundred thousand dollar assessment, which would be low for carvel, but let's just use that for round numbers. Then times twenty five percent would be what fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So then fifty thousand dollars times fifty. Just fifty, because it's per thousand dollars. So fifty times a dollar eighty four. Uh, yeah, that doesn't look right to me. Is that right? I think yeah, that's. It, what did you so get, John? Ninety two dollars. Yeah, no, no, so no that's per, not right. I think that's it's right. It's per hundred dollars. It's per hundred dollars. Sorry, a hundred a dollar eighty four per one hundred dollars of assessed property valuation. Okay. So if two ninety, it would be nine hundred and would you say ninety two dollars? It'd be nine hundred nine hundred twenty dollars. Nine hundred twenty dollars. We got our decimals off. Gotcha. Okay, so fifty thousand. You'd have to do. You, you do fifty thousand. We missed a step, and that's okay. We are live here, so this mm-hmm. happens. Fifty thousand divided by a hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred times one point eighty four. Right. Nine hundred twenty dollars. Yeah. Nine twenty. Nine hundred twenty dollars. Okay, so if your house is worth two hundred thousand dollars, you're going to pay Carville taxes nine hundred twenty dollars. You might have some other taxes, right? But that's your Carville, that's your Carville property tax in the new model. Um, yes. And before that, you would have been paying, you know, maybe eight hundred and something. So, um, so, so not a whole lot. But then you said um, for so, but but when everybody pays that on the population, you, you said one cent. Um, is equal to 200 and something thousand dollars in income. So if you're adding it 12 cents at times 200 or something, then, you know, we're dropping $3 million in the budget or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the reason, the reason for that uh, is we have to plan to budget and opening. We are w- working on a new fire station, number six. Um, and we have the cost of that construction, all the, uh, the, f- the staffing for that fire station, public safety, that's part of it. And typically of this 12 cent increase, really 8% is going to be, can be allocated towards that, the fire station and public safety within the fire department. Okay. And then we also, about two cents of that is going to be allocated for improvements with our um, technology, the infrastructure, um, cyber attacks. I mean, there's, as you, as everybody's getting them. So we have lots of upgrades that are due in our IT department. So if you look at it, it's not, I mean, we've looked at numbers and numbers and numbers. And one proposal was like a 2019 cent increase. And no, we don't want to do that. So we always try to live within our means. There's really, we, we've cut any kind of frivolous spending. We do have payroll increases. Our um, health care costs are not going up um, for the town employees. So that's good. So it was pretty much five months of of going through every line item pretty much in the budget to see what we have to do, what we can do, what we can't do. And um, that's what the proposal is at this, which will be Monday night. And there there should be a lot more information coming out. Gotcha. Okay. So um, are you in support of it? Well, at this point, we have to do it. Yes, we need to. Plus, what we do is we don't try to increase the taxes this year and then next year and the next year. When we talk about this, we look three, four years out and what's can it, what can we do now to sustain us for the next three to four years? Is it now, enough? It should be. It should be. Yes. As long as there's not any unforeseen expenses or surprises, 
Um, it and we always plan. We plan well far out. So we've had this fire station in our capital improvement plan for at least 10, 15 years, knowing when the population gets to a certain amount, that's when it needs to happen. Um, fire trucks, a couple million dollars. Um, there's a three-year delay in getting new fire trucks, if you can believe that, because they yeah. build them from scratch. So we have, we've got the ladder truck for fire station six. You might've seen it around. They did the big, um, they had it at fair on the square, I believe. And it has the dragon on the bucket of the fire station, the ladder truck, um, yeah. because that fire station will be right across from Carnival high school. So as we grow, as we expand, then we have additional expenses, but we've been planning for those. And but we're so, also increasing the bucket of taxpayers in that we continue to build yeah. houses in this community. We continue to add retailers like stacks, for example, sales tax revenues will continue to increase. You've got corporate headquarters and other businesses such as that coming here, looking to come here. So the pool of investors, let's say in our community continues to rise. So the number of taxpayers continues to do this, which accelerates sales tax revenues and other sources of income for the community, which is all part of it and all positive in my opinion. So yeah, absolutely. That's, that's positive as well. Sure. So there's other ways to get income um, and, and those are important and those the offset um, raising taxes, but it sounds like this is uh, the quickest way to, to do this. And I think, you know, understanding what was happening and, and being kind of involved in the last election cycle, a, you know, a fire station on the, what they call the South side of Carville, um, was, there was a lot of support, right? There was a lot of support by the community. People campaigned on it, um, you know, feeling like that it was needed down there. So, um, so this was kind of expected, um, you know, and, and when you ask for things like that and, and, and you have support for things like that, they cost, you know, there, there's a, there's a dollar sign associated with them. Um, but, you know, but it's necessary. And, and so I, I trust that you guys have done the, the due diligence on, on that and come up with a fair, a fair rate. It sounds like you have, um, so is it, let me ask you, and, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to sound like I'm beating a dead horse here, but, um, I was, I drove down Shelton road the other day and man, come on. The, you, you, it, it's, it, 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 I mean, this is, this is, you know, I, you might as well at this point, rip it up and make it a dirt road. You know? Well, you know, what's, what's happening there, Keith is the developer, because we try as much as we possibly can to put the burden of road improvements and construction on the developer, because we don't want our taxpayers to have to pay for it. So that developer Magnolia homes is responsible for widening Shelton road. So the town has an agreement with them says it didn't make sense for us to repave that when they were going to dig it up and widen it and then have to do it. So that's coming. And it was part of their agreement when they got to the next phase of homes, which is where they are now. So there is contracts going back and forth with our development department and Dale Perryman to work on that road improvements. And so that will be widened as well as totally repaved soon. I can't promise well, you when, how, but it's how coming. far, what part are we talking about? I mean, it's going to go to the it. bridge at this, that section in front of the Magnolia development. So from Carver Arlington and Shelton over to the bridge, right close to Peterson Lake. The light, okay. the light. The light. And that's yeah, as okay. far as I know, that's the worst part. And that may be the part you travel the most. Okay. So you got, so yeah, because you got people coming down Peterson and cutting over and all that too. But so, but you've, so you have Magnolia who is a development there, a residential development there. And so this is, if I'm hearing you right, this is not a tax issue because you have worked with the developer um, to, to, to repave those roads. So that, so it's not coming out of the tax dollars. Well, we pay our portion that we would have paid to repave it. And the developer's doing it all at once. So we've saved money for that project. Yes. Okay. So the developer's not paying for it. He's just executing it? He's executing our portion, but he's paying for his portion for the widening as well as his portion. Oh, the widening. Okay. Okay. I didn't hear that part. Okay. So it's going to be widened. And so then, so the additional, so you would have paved the, the two lane, the, the town would have paved the two lane. Um, it's going to be widened. So the developer, it's a, it's a joint effort. And so the town's paying for that portion of what it would cost to repave it and, and then... 
he's paying for the widening. And that's what, when you say soon, is that like 2035 or? <laughs> no, I think it's 2023. I believe it's 2023. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Should what about some year. of the, what, what about the, you know, we were redoing the pipes. We've been talking about this for years, but what about, you know, Poplar from, you know, interstate exit to down what, what's yes. happening there? The contractor that, that did the water line improvement has come back and did a lot of repairs. So um, it, about a month ago, I mean, you couldn't drive down Poplar coming from Piperton going west um, because of where every time they cut to connect a pipe, it was you were just um, yeah. you were shaking all the way down. So they've come down and done a lot of their improvements for that. So it's not it's smoother. Now, we're still yeah. working with the state on getting that repaved. We're pushing them to do it as soon as possible. The last I heard, it would be sometime in 2024. Okay. Um, we're hoping earlier in 2024, the weather is always a factor um, with that. When we have a lot of rain and cold, you know, the asphalt has to be at a certain temperature and it has to be pretty hot. Yeah. So yeah. excuses, excuses. What, I know. We, we got to get it done, man. I mean, like, <laughs> we do. We really do. Yeah. And it's, yeah. again, that's a state project, not a taxpayer project. But the main yeah. thing is, is we're watching it to make sure it's, you know, every improvement has to settle. We don't want to repave and then have a cave in. Um, well, so, yeah, no doubt. I mean, that would not be good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we need to do it right. So, but mm -hmm. I just, you know, I think people want to, people want to know, people are asking about it. I mean, man, it's, it's, it's a, uh, you know, the, the, these roads are getting pretty rough. We've been talking about them. We've been saying, okay, they're tolerable, but man, I mean, some of these things now, I mean, like we're talking about on Shelton, I mean, there's more patches than there is road, there are. Uh, you yeah. know? Um, and so it, it's a, you know, it, it's a, I think it's a big deal. I think it's a, a the, it does make a lot of sense to, to spend some dollars there, um, whether you put those in reserve or, you know, what you what you do. I mean, as a business there in Carville, you know, I, I don't want to say this out loud, but I mean, I'd be for uh, some level of tax increase if we could start doing some some infrastructure improvements like that uh, as well. And, and I know you've already saved for it and all that, but, you know, make that 12 cents 13 and let's get some dang roads. You know, um, <laughs> well, you know, and, and there is always a, a roads plan in place, and Maureen could probably talk about that. But for example, somebody called me the other day and was uh, concerned about the roads within Chilling Farms, and basically said those need to be fixed now. And he was talking about the roads in front of IMC, and we said, "Well, we hear you, but there's a big construction project going on there right now, so it wouldn't make sense to repave the road while all these construction vehicles are running around. Let's get that." Let's patch it, and once this construction project, the water tower district, is completed or to a certain phase, then we can repave the entire roadway there. So there's there's oftentimes things going on that push back or push off some of these improvements, and the town makes sort of patchwork on this stuff yeah. to, to uh -huh. kind of keep the hey, hey, I'm, I'm learning from you. Patchwork. <laughs> but yeah, there's so, you know, and the, you know, then you throw in other factors, but sometimes. You know, we're well aware of it and we ride, we drive these roads as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, and the number, yeah, the number we have in our paving budget that's proposed for next year is $2.5 million for paving. That's, so we're and, trying to catch up because then back in 2007, 2008, when the economy, unfortunately, the board at that time voted not to spend money on the paving. So it put us further behind. So 2.5 million is what we're proposing to spend for paving according to my notes that I've made during our work sessions. Okay. So 2.5 and that's going to be, you know, just your, there'll be a road plan that kind of comes out that talks about what that's going to cover somewhere that we can. Um, yes. Yeah. We always vote on how we're going to spend that. But now I have another note that says maybe it's 3 million. So 2.5 to 3 million um, okay. for paving. And, you know, we have staff that, I mean, we all drive the roads, but you know, our um, police department, public works, there you go, every cove, every street to pick up trash and recycling every, so they keep up with the roads. I know Steeplechase, Wellington Farms, Rosewood and Steeplechase have all been getting, they had their milling and the patchwork done last uh, fall, but they couldn't do the asphalt because of the weather and what have you. So they're now in the process of getting repaved. And um, so I know several of those neighborhoods, especially Steeplechase, it was, it was, patchwork it was like a quilt of of things to fix so hopefully that's getting done this week with the hot weather 
Gotcha. Yeah, I hope so. I, and it's, I, I just think it's a topic to talk about. And, and, you know, you mentioned the police. I mean, so mate, so anybody that's listening that thinks thinking about committing a crime in car will just know that, you know, you might get a flat tire from a pothole, but our police has special tires because we're adapted to the road. So, um, so, you know, it's, it's a security measure is why the roads are this way. Uh, it helps us to, to catch criminals. That's <laughs> You never know what Keith is going to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. What else is happening with the with the BMA? Um, and uh, I'll, I'll get us into some other things with John talking about some growth and some things that have happened around town. But um, is anything? Let me ask. Uh, is anything happening um, with that with with the Ashby development? You know, I have. You know, we all saw the social media and we heard that uh, O Charlie's had closed. Right. Um, last, I believe it was last week, Monday. Um, I don't believe that building is for sale. I'm thinking what I've heard is they're wanting to have a tenant rent lease that space. That is part of the Ashby development. Um, but I have not seen anything new come through from Ashby. Um, you know, at one time there was a proposal to come in that would go from Maynard Way and it was some commercial and some residential, some apartments and a whole master plan for that area that included the Sheffield section, the um, where the dollar tree is, it should be a dollar 25 now. Um, the um, O'Charlie's that yeah, whole yeah. complex. The dollar 25 tree. So yeah. part, part of the part of the Ashby development was to refurbish and revitalize that center or yeah knock it down and, and start over. What Parts of it, I believe that the road that comes from Highway 72 was going to go north and they were going to improve that intersection. It was going to come in and it was going to cut through kind of next to O'Charlie's toward the back. That gar outdoor garden area that's part of Sheffield's now mm -hmm. was going to be improved. And there was, there was going to be a lot of improvements that was proposed. And a park? I know, I'm sorry? And a park? And there were going to be some pocket parks and all of that. Now the balloon festival is coming up in September and that's still planning to be in the same area behind the Sheffields mm -hmm. and the Maynard way, because no development has, has, it'll still be available for us this year to use. Um, gotcha. So, so you we don't hear, know of anything, mm -hmm. anything that's coming up. I mean, we got to, you know, we know balloon, they couldn't develop anything past before the balloon. There wouldn't be time to develop anything before the balloon no. festival, anything, but once that hot air is over, we might could get to some development there. Is that where, that, is that where I think, I believe the applicants are still working through some issues and, um, and I, they're still coming with things. Yes. But nothing that has been voted on at this point. Yeah. I so would nothing. think st strategically with oh, Charlie's going out, uh, Tuesday morning closing nationwide, the deli there, butcher shop going out. Now would be the time to revitalize and refurbish that center and modernize it and begin to fix it in some form or fashion. So we'll see what happens. I would be, that's how I would be thinking about it. Yeah. Sure. yeah, I mean, it's a good segue into development, uh, uh, John, because it, cause since you brought up O'Charlie's oh, moving, but that whole area, um, and we've seen it on social media. I, I didn't appreciate really the way that people talked about that area on social media. I think it, it gave, gave Carville a, a, an overall a, a bad a rap there and a bad tone the way that it hit social media a little bit. I think that uh, we could be a little better about how we talk about things sometimes. But the reality is, is that area is one of the older parts of town. Yeah. Um, but it is a high traffic part of town. Uh, right. There is room for there. There is room for growth there. There's room for modernization there. And there's okay. a developer that's got pockets that is ready to do that. Um, and up until this point, it has been um, pushed back from the some of the citizens and the in, that live in those neighborhoods a little bit. Um, the BMA has turned down some of the things that the, that that developer has tried to put forward as a local developer. Um, so just kind of with every, you know, you know, now O'Charlie's is gone. And I don't know that it, that O'Charlie's is gone because of where they were located as much as, you know, maybe some of the way that they were operating. I don't know. But it still stands to reason that that area needs a revitalization. Right. Um, that it needs some it, it, it needs some work. And if we're going to I think maybe you would would you say, John, that it, that if it had some of those things in place, that it would be easier to recruit other other businesses to come to come there um, when they're looking if they if that were modernized some of the people that are that are on your list or they're talking to you um, that might be a good area I mean Poplar Frontage is a good area right so that might be a good area but they might be overlooking it now because it's uncertain because it, this has been tied up in red tape forever we don't know if the road's going to come through we don't know if the developer's going to happen so it's just sitting there um, and as it just sits there it just continues to to, to degrade right and so with all that uncertainty nothing's going to happen there until that's decided. So there's a lot of red tape. There's a lot of things that are, that are, that are possible there. We got a developer with money. 
it's got to be affecting economic development, right? Well, John? I think a certain type of tenant, a certain type of client would be very comfortable there and would be very happy there and would, would thrive there. But I, then the flip side is there are certain clients, tenants, users that wouldn't be as attracted to that versus maybe some other developments in town. So it just depends on who you're courting and who thinks they could make it work there versus others that feel like maybe they need to be somewhere else. So there are opportunities, but I guess what I was saying a minute ago was I think with the changes and the, the vacancies now maybe would be a time to refurbish and refresh just like Edwards Realty is planning on doing with uh, the carriage crossing. You know, they're talking about revitalize, refurbish, re refresh, rebrand. Maybe those some of those same concepts could hold here, refurbish, revitalize, rework it. So, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud, but I think that's how developers think. And, you know, tenants and clients think different ways as well. So it's complicated, but I think there will be opportunities there. So let's just see what what unfolds. I think it's going to be positive at some point. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I think something will, will, will come of it, right? But yep. I think it's it's a it's just a, it's a tough situation, and I understand some of the people that live around there are concerned. Um, I don't understand why they were necessarily concerned about what they were trying to do with the apartments. I think that was a non-issue, but I understand concern with with creating more traffic on the roads that kids might be walking to school and, and, you know, all of that type of stuff. I mean, I get it. Um, but everybody's got to put their heads together on this because this is a, you know, I don't want to be negative, but it's kind of a pain point because the, it's an area of town that is just stagnant um, because it's the, the developers trying to go in and do things. The community is being hostile there. And I think hostile is an appropriate word for some of the things that's got, that's come back there it, is it because of what they don't want. And then, you know, so then the BMA is having to react to what the people are saying and, and, and all of that, you got stuff that's fine with the planning commission because the zoning is good, all that, but then, you know, the, the people and BMA are, are there and, and it's, so it's a tough deal, but something's got to move on it. Right. Because, um, you, and it goes even further than that in that part of town because you get into, you know, closer to Kroger, you've got that old uh, breakfast place, is, is CKs or whatever is there. I mean, that, that whole kind of strip right there um, is, 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 I would say, is a, is, a, is a point that needs focus, right? Well, yeah, if you look at from Bahalia to the square, it, you know, going from the west to the east and from the east to the west, revitalization has begun. I mean, Slim Chickens is new. Aldi is new. Panda is new. Other end, Verizon and uh, Jimmy John's. Jimmy John's, and then <laughs> there's some new bank yeah. buildings there, and the new furniture store has been painted and it revitalized. Looks nice. It looks good. So there's there's revitalization and redevelopment going on in both directions, and I think, and I'm hoping that that mo uh, momentum continues through. And I'm not throwing a stone at that center at all. Because there are tenants there. I, I visit there. I utilize the, those spaces all the time. There's value there. But, I, you know, I think there comes a time when maybe some upgrades would help for a variety of reasons. And you, you mentioned CKs. Uh, I understand the plan there is to raise that and to create a pad there for new development. So there are things happening in and around where O'Charlie's and Tuesday morning and is located. So I think that that positive momentum is going to continue. Yeah, and I and I appreciate the the, the positive counterpoint, um, and, and but I think that what you're saying is is valid too. That if you've got you got O Charlie's that that just went out the um, what is it the the C Town meat fresh meat place went out right. Yeah. Um, is is it Tuesday morning that's that's going out nationwide? Yeah. Um, Tuesday yeah, yeah. morning so is Tuesday morning is going out nationwide. So if you were going to do something there, it, and if I'm a developer. And I see my tenants are leaving for whatever reasons. Um, and I am looking to put a new development there. I'm not going to spend a, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time refreshing the existing development. It, 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 I'm not, if I'm thinking of, of doing something totally different there about it. And so, but now is the time I would say if, if I have less tenants, there's less disruption, less negotiation with tenants I have to do, let, you know, then the time is right to, to your, to your, point john a little bit is that when you're in this situation it might be the time to say let's move let's get something done um and so so that so that everything you know is, is less disruptive um there's still some things that would be disrupted there but I, you know i think they had plans of working with sheffields and all that type of stuff so 
Um, but the time, it seems to be now. I mean, it, the, the writing's on the wall with things that are going out. Um, and I don't know, Maureen, if there's anything that the that the town can do or, or, or what's happening there or negotiations with that developer, um, you know, or, or what we can push through. And if you're watching this as part of the community, you know, get involved as well, because something's got to happen there. But, you know, and, and you might have to make some compromises a little bit to give the developer what they need to, to, to generate the income they need. Um, and it's already zoned in a certain way. Uh, and so you, you might have to make some compromises and stuff to have to let that air to, to, to push through on that area. So, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not being negative, Nancy. I'm trying to be, you know, um, no offense to any Nancy's out there, but uh, but I'm trying to, you know, say that the, that it does need some help. Let's recognize that it does need some help. Let's recognize that some businesses are moving from there. Um, and maybe the time is right to do that. Um, and, and that it, maybe the town is right for the for the town. To, to raise an eyebrow and say, okay, you know, maybe we need to, to, to back up a little bit too on some of the strictness of, and, and, the, and the reactiveness from the community a little bit. What do you think about that, Maureen? No, I think that's good. And I know the Ashby development, it was kind of three different phases. You had the apartments that were going to go in behind the uh, funeral home, which they have built a beautiful new building over off of Winchester. Mm -hmm. And my understanding, there's another funeral home that's, that's looking at leasing that space. Um, so you had the one phase of the apartments and then further beyond there, we had the um, the neighborhood, as you mentioned, about the cut through road. So the developer has come back and it's gone through us on, I think, on one reading, um, a proposal um, for housing that's between Maynard Way on the north and White Road on the south without a cut through road um, access for the fire department, like an emergency access, but not driving, you know, traffic back and forth. And then you had the phase that included the commercial and the retail and possibly a hotel and headquarters and all that in the area behind the Sheffields and that open field, which is the balloon festival location. So right. there were three different phases. Um, you know, John and I talk about it a lot, you know, how does a business decide where they want to be? Well, everybody wants, most of the time they want to be where there's the most traffic. Sure. So you look at the Houston levee, Poplar Corridor, that's the busiest intersection in Carnival. Um, okay, so is there spaces there for businesses to come in or are they going to move a little further out? So um, it's not, you know, the discussion, you know, C-Town. Um, I talked to that owner. I think there's someone that's possibly interested in buying the business. Um, when it was just a meat market, I think they were fine. But then they had a business model decision to open a catering and then to expand and do more groceries. And then it just got, you know, the lease has got to be, the rent has to be super expensive. Um, so possibly they will, some form of a meat market will come back from that business, either that so. location or another location. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of, I mean, there's still businesses that want to be in Carville, but I would think that Yes, that owner of that development now would be the time to make some improvements and some upgrades, whether it's sometimes it's amazing what, you know, some stone and some paint, because, you know, that center where Chow Baby is now. When I moved here, there was a grocery store there called the Jitney Jungle, I think it was called. <laughs> yeah, um, I, think I, think it was, I thought it was Jitney Premier. Jitney Premier. Oh, yeah. We called it the Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jenny. It, what, I think Jenny was down a little further from that, like right when you okay. where there's a church there now, where that Jenny was that in that that bigger building on down towards the hospital. That, that I oh, think. okay. It, well, that it, center that then was, yeah. needed to be revitalized and updated, yeah. and they added stone columns and some paint, and now you know it looks good. And of course, that was still probably 20 years ago. So maybe you, you know, know we may be thinking about the same thing. I, I, I may have my areas confused though. I just put that, but it was in the church now. I think it's or FedEx. FedEx, FedEx is okay, in there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it it's, FedEx. Yeah, it okay, is soon yeah. to be. Uh, it's yeah. soon to be a Habitat for Humanity operation. Okay. Uh, okay. FedEx has FedEx has consolidated their operations in Shelby County, and that they're moving that command center meeting yeah. space somewhere else. And I believe it's going to become a Habitat for Humanity office and quasi warehouse. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're right. I was wrong about that. It, 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 that's that's at right place. I'm with you now. Yeah. And that yeah. center has new tenants. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's also uh, some movement afoot. There might be a, another retailer going kind of between where Patton is and Booyah's. There appears to be a retailer going in in an out parcel there. So there's okay. that center is thriving and has been revitalized. And, you know, we got some great brands in there and some new brands in there. So, you know, that's how it all works. You know, over time, things evolve and change and elevate. So that's Probably what's going to happen at uh, the center we're talking about where O'Charlie's and all that is that that same sort of 
uh, vibe and concept will probably unfold there at some point. And John, I noticed out in at Kroger, you know, you have that um, where there's an auto, it's you have the Kroger and then there was where the old um, Mexican restaurant was that has moved. Yep. At one time I had heard Kroger was not releasing, extending any leases because they were going to tear that down and make additional parking. But now I see a, a real estate company that's trying to release that space. So it looks to me like, and I haven't asked anybody this and maybe you will know, it looks to me like they're looking to rent to lease that space again. Have they? Do you know if they've changed their mind about an expansion? No, that's correct. Uh, and, I, okay. and there is a a specific tenant that appears to be moving to the old La Hacienda space, a, a brand we all know, oh. a brand that's in this market uh, pretty prominently. Can you uh, share? I, I can't, but uh -huh. you know, yeah, there's activity, and that's one thing I'm gonna was gonna talk about at my Chamber of Commerce speech on you know July twelfth luncheon is, you know, there are a lot of people marketing and branding and looking at and moving in and out of our community, just as we're doing all that, others are doing it as well. So the people at CBRE, uh, Ashley Walker specifically, is the one that told me about CKs being torn down and a pad being created. She also told me about uh, what's potentially going to happen in the old Hacienda. So once again, new tenants, revitalization, refurbish, renew, rebrand, that whole, con here we go again. That those sorts of things are potentially going to happen there as well, but I don't think Kroger is going to expand toward popular, popular like they had talked about it. They're going to just continue to do what they do at their current location. And it's a pretty big store. I mean, it, it, it's a you know, and and I think it all kind of plays together. And I, I think one of the the coolest things that that I have seen um, is the the move that we, that we saw from moving Grisani's from the back of Sheffield's again, something moving out of that area, yep. um, but making an upgrade into moving on the, in, into moving on to the town square where, where 148 used to be. Um, that's going to be maybe the biggest Grisani's in, in town, but um, that helps the square because that's kind of a destination. Grisani's is kind of a destination. People seek that out and they will drive there. So that helps the historic district. Um, and so then you're, now it's even, you know, circling back again to that area. You're talking about, well, maybe some people want to be at Houston Levy and Poplar, and that's a busy area. I get that with the traffic. Yeah. But the more you do in the historic district, which could use some improvements as well. Don't get me on my soapbox there. But but when you when you pull, you start to pull now. I'm pulling down that area of Poplar. As I've got more people coming this time of year, I've got more people coming to concert series. I've got now Grisani's possibly coming in. That's a destination. People will come in from out of town, from from, from Memphis and other areas to eat at right. Grisani's. It'll, it'll pull from other areas. Um, and so I'm pulling down that stretch of, 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 of Poplar. Um, and so it becomes even more important, you know, to, 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 to make that area and, and maybe that area that'll drop some traffic. Maybe that'll get up some of the, the cars that are going by and things like that. That'll drop some, some push that developer to, to move as well. And, and for the town to move on it. So it's all kind of circles, right? Well, and, and, and Grisani's Grisani's for anybody who's been in Memphis for 20 minutes knows that uh, Grisani's is an iconic Memphis brand. They know about Grisani's all throughout this region because they've experienced Grisani's at all the locations they've had over the years. And to have a Grisani's in your town is a big deal. Uh, yeah. It's something that everybody's familiar with. Uh, you know, they got you know, the Miss Mary's salad and the Elpo special and all those great dishes. And people will come for that. And I think that the fact that the square is getting another restaurant is very important. The square, need, like you said, needs more restaurants, needs more destinations, needs more gathering places. And, they're, they're not just going to move in there. They're probably going to revitalize and refurbish and fix it up and off they go. So it's, I think it's very positive for the community and very positive for the square as well. Yeah, that was great news. And so, you know, when something you, you see on Charlie's clothes and then back up or oh, Grisani's is coming, you know, I, I mean, it, it, and me personally, I'll take Grisani's over a Charlie's any day if that's the trade I got to make. Right. So it, yeah, but, but they the, don't, do they have free pie Wednesday? Come on, Keith. <laughs> do those Charlie's have free pie Wednesday? I don't, you know, the, <laughs> The last time I was in O'Charlie's, I, I I can understand why they yeah. are closing, but that but that's been a while. Um, yeah, but a I think lot of they things, were struggling. You know, I tell you what, too, um, Chili's is struggling, uh, and 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 that's something. Well, let me about. tell you though, Keith, have you been there lately? Yeah, but I but I do the the curbside. Um, but, oh, I'll tell yeah. you, we've been there twice, probably in the last two weeks, and they're really, I think they they've turned the corner. I believe. I hope so. They've got great service and um, good food. And, um, you know, the last two times we've been there, the it's been there's been many, many more people there than have been there. 
the last two years. I know they were having some staffing issues and they had the the only part of it open by the bar for a while and all that, but I've gone there. I've continued to go there. We, we, we pick up curbside there all the time. I think, you know, and, and, and Chili's I think is a really good chain for Carville. And, and I'll tell you why is it, it, for me, if I'm, if I go into a town um, and we're, we're over on town, but if I go into a new town and I'm here and I'm there for whatever reason, I know that if there's a Chili's there, that I know what to expect on the menu. I know what's consistent. You know, I know that the, the quality is going to be consistent. I mean, it's a good, well-run national chain. Yep. Um, you know, it's not, it, it's not Grassani's by any means, uh, but it's a, but it's a good, well-run national chain. So when you have people visiting Carterville, um, they see the chilies, it gives you some sort of an idea of what, you know, what kind of town it is. It's, it's able to hold the chilies and, and I can go there. I can visit there if I'm in for, you know, softball tournaments or whatever. Um, and so I think it's a good piece that we need in the town. So I think the town needs to support it. And I've heard, yep talking to other people i w- i went to chili's one time and and um and i and i got a text and they said hey where are you i was like hey i'm in chili's and, and the person texted me back and they're like oh yeah way to support local keith and i'm like okay um i i hear what you're saying but um and, and it's because I, I i'm outspoken about local all the time but local employer but it is it fits in the puzzle and, and it fits in the grand scheme of things and it helps to promote local businesses because it helps the town elevate and those type of things so go out and support chili's if you're not i'm great to hear that well Maureen, keith- because you know, back in back in the late seventies, when I was at SCMU in Dallas, we used to go to the original Chili's, the first oh, really? Chili's. It's a Dallas-based wow. brand. It's Brinker. We went to the original one, and it's grown. But you're exactly right, Keith. Great point. When you're traveling, you're visiting Chili's. You're traveling, visiting Hampton Inn. You yep. know what the brand is. You know what you're going to get. And we've got a lot of places like that in town. I drove through a Chipotle today and and that's mm-hmm. another brand that people know about and will gravitate towards so we got a lot of all these the same way yeah. people know these brands we have these brands and it's important to support these Long- brands because Long- yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so we've got a lot of familiar brands in town that that do a great job and yeah you're right we need to support them yeah, we need to support those. And, and, and it's you don't hear me say that often, but some of these things are are, are crucial to the way the Carville crows. I am a local type guy, but I'm at Chili's and, and you should be too. Um, some part of the town. So, um, guys, I appreciate you. Um, like I said, we're over on time. Um, I think we hit some good some good topics here. Circle back on some things uh, talking about taxes and roads and Ashby and um, to give some some general updates. We're going to be getting into deeper things week by week here and let us know what you want us to talk about as well. Hit us on the tour card. Facebook page, make a post, make a comment. Let us know what you want to talk about. Uh, looks like John wants to say. Can I can I give you a, te- a teaser for next week? A little tease. Yeah, bring it on. Under the category of moon missions, mm-hmm. I had a conversation yesterday with the Nashville Stars. I thought you might say that. Getting ready who for some are, baseball. Who are uh, trying to bring Major League Baseball to Tennessee, specifically Nashville. And my thought is you need to have a, a presence in West Tennessee to create interest, branding, a fan base in West Tennessee. And they were they were doing this the whole time we were talking. So we shall see how that unfolds. Kind of cool, kind of exciting. Um, the conversation was brisk and positive. So you never know. So we shall see as we wander forward looking for uh, economic development opportunities for our community. That's, that's an interesting one, a unique one. We'll see what happens there. Yeah, let's talk about that next week for sure, because I'd be interested in understand. I mean, I'll think that a a baseball would be awesome in Carville. It, it's some sort of minor league support team to a, to a Tennessee team or something like that. Yeah. Um, where would it go would be the question I would have. What, what could be some possible places that would go? And I'm not asking right now. Let's talk about it next week. I, I think it, be, yeah, it should go in Ashby. It should go right behind. Go Ashby, right? Yeah. 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 Where the balloon festival was. Forget yeah, the balloon festival. We got baseball to play. Oh, well, you could, we, could, we could be in the balloons watching the game. Right? There you go. There you go. Come <laughs> but come back next week. We're going to talk about ball, y'all. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you then. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.